Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I'm Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. Um, we are as usual in front of our very, very cool representative image of this rover on Mars, motivating us to um, study the design and analysis of algorithms that are going to be driving systems such as these. So <clears throat> until last time, uh, what we were looking at was uh, sort of uh, a couple, you know, couple of examples uh, illustrating the different notions of stability that we had seen. So we had spoken about asymptotic, globally asymptotic, uniformly asymptotic, globally uniformly asymptotic, exponential and globally exponential stability. Right? So we had looked at several stability notions and I do hope that all of you are going to be able to remember all of these acronyms, which are sort of easier to remember than of course these you know full length long um, sort of words. Yeah, so I do hope that all of you can remember these acronyms. The important thing to um, keep in mind is that um, we we almost uh, require always just to remember two properties, right? And uh, these two properties are that of stability and attractivity, right? And once we have a good handle on these two notions of stability and attractivity, all the other definitions and notions uh, sort of follow from there all right after that we looked at a couple of examples this first one was an example of a system which was uh, attractive but not stable right and then the second one was of course that of a very very standard pendulum dynamics at return in state space form and this is actually a globally uniformly asymptotically stable system. So this is GUAS. And the face plane portrait of this system lot of sort of looks like a spiraling in uh, curve uh, in the X when it's two plane. All right. Excellent. So this is where we were last time, right? Um, and what we want to do is uh, sort of look at uh, a few more examples, right? We want to look at a few more examples today. Uh, so this is uh, lecture 3.5. So this is the fifth lecture of week three, right? So we continue our excursion into examples illustrating the different notions of stability. So this one is this x dot is minus sigma x cubed with some positive sigma. And in this particular case, I can, you know, because it's a scalar system, right? So x is in reals, of course. Uh, we can actually nicely compute the solution. It looks something like this, right? Uh, of course, we are assuming that x t zero is some value x zero. Okay, so uh, with this initial condition description, the solution can be written in this very nice compact form. All right, and once we have this, I mean, the conclusion is of course written right here that it is globally asymptotically stable. Let us sort of look at it a little bit more carefully. The first question is uh, that of uh, stability. Okay, so the first question is that of stability. Okay, so what can I see from here is that this solution can, of course, be further uh, maybe written in this form um, plus minus, I still say retain this x0 divided by square root of twice sigma 
x0 squared t minus t0 plus 1. Okay, something that we can do. We can write it in this form. Or we can keep it in this original form. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can keep it in this form. Now, what do we want in a typical um, stability? Sort of uh, for a typical stability condition, what do I usually require? I require that the absolute value, right? Absolute value, right? Which is essentially, I'm going to keep my life a little bit simple. Uh, absolute value of this is simply obtained by deleting the plus minus sign, right? And putting in absolute value symbol here, if you may. Okay, or, or simply uh, writing it as um, 1 over square root of twice sigma t minus t naught plus 1 over x0 squared. All right. Now, what do we want? We usually want this to be less than epsilon, right? Because 0 is the equilibrium, right? So it should be obvious that x e is equal to 0, right? Even without doing any change of coordinates, I directly have my x e to be at 0 itself. Right? Now, suppose I want this to happen. Right? So, this is sort of what we want to happen. Right. Um, and I want to find some delta. I want to find some delta. So, what I would do is, of course, try to simplify this expression and so on and so forth. Right. So, what would it be? So what I will do is that I will sort of, you know, uh, well, first of all, I will make this bigger so I can have more space to write. So what I'm going to say is that uh, I know for sure that, uh, let's see, let's see what do I know for sure. I know for sure that uh, one, uh, that I know, so let me just say it up front. I know that as t becomes greater than t0, right, this is a positive number. So as t becomes greater than t0, this is a positive number. And so this is the entire thing is, of course, positive. And therefore, this is adding some positive quantity, and therefore, it is reducing the inverse. Right? The inverse is getting smaller as t becomes greater than t0. So the largest value right that this entire quantity can take is when t is exactly equal to t0 right because as long as as soon as t becomes greater than t0 this is going to contribute a positive quantity which is going to reduce this inverse right so one thing that should be sort of evident to you immediately is that one over uh or let me just write it like this so that this is in fact less than so so this is in fact uh greater than so this is x0 right because what happens so in fact absolute value of x0 because let's see what happens right if i plug in so what did i say i said that this quantity attains its largest value at t equal to t0 because as soon as t becomes greater than t0 the numerator becomes larger and therefore the inverse becomes sorry the denominator becomes larger and therefore the inverse is smaller right so small a largest value of this entire fraction is at t equal to t0 and if i plug t equal to t0 this guy goes away and all i'm left with is absolute value of x0 right so if i ensure uh, that's the cool thing right so if absolute value of x0 is less than epsilon then i am ensuring that 1 over square root of 2 sigma t minus t0 plus 1 over x0 square is also less than epsilon right because i will write it in completeness this happens. Right? This is less than norm or absolute value of x0. That is less than epsilon. Right? So what does it mean? It means that I can 
means that choose delta exactly equal to epsilon. And then we are done. And if I choose de delta exactly equal to epsilon, it means that my initial conditions will start within the epsilon ball. And if initial conditions start within the epsilon ball, I am guaranteed that the solutions which are smaller than the initial condition are also within the epsilon ball. So I can in fact choose delta equal to epsilon. So note that this is independent. I mean, we didn't even have to work for it. This is independent of T0, right? So what does it mean? It means that, yeah, it means what? It means this is uniformly stable. Okay, this is uniformly stable, right? Now, what can I say about attractivity? Well, I mean, attractivity is rather straightforward, right? I mean, as I keep increasing T here, this is going to go to zero, right? It doesn't, in fact, matter what initial condition I choose, not at all. It does not matter what initial condition I choose, it is going to contribute here. Sure, it's going to contribute here, right? It's going to contribute here, but irrespective of what is the size of this, irrespective of the size of this quantity, this is definitely going to blow up to infinity, right? And you're going to converge. This solution is going to converge to the origin, right? So in attractivity, it's just in fact obvious, obvious that it is globally uniformly attract yeah it's globally attractive sure right and the fact that it is uniformly attractive is also evident by the fact that you have a t minus t0 right it doesn't matter so this this bound on this x0 is first of all global in fact so whenever it is global uh, you know uniformity does not have to be thought of because delta is obviously all of Rn or all of R in this case. Therefore, it is obviously uniform also. Yeah, because the whole idea of being uniform is that uh, the, the bound delta depends on T0. But if the bound is all of R, then it depends on nothing. All right. So obviously, it is globally uniformly attractive. Now, if I combine these two properties, global uniform attractive and uniformly stable, then what do I get? I get globally uniformly asymptotically stable. Okay, not just globally asymptotically stable, but it is globally uniformly asymptotically stable. Okay, so this is a rather nice example. I mean, because we could actually solve it first of all and of course it has a you know rather <coughs> good set of properties it is globally uniformly asymptotically stable right so the origin is globally uniformly asymptotically stable for this system okay <coughs> excellent excellent so let's look at the next example right so we are looking at a bunch of examples to get a good feel for uh, what stable system, what asymptotically stable systems, what I mean, and then so on, what attractive systems, what do these look like? Right? So this is a, you know, sort of a uh, second order system, x1 dot is x2 and x2 dot is minus x1 minus 2 over plus tx2. So this is a sort of second order system. Now, if you look at the solution, the solutions look something like this. So, so this is, of course, I mean, let me be clear again. Yeah. Uh, Uh, let's see. Okay, I think the solution is uh, created in this case, assuming that x10 is x10 and x20 is x20, like this kind of a notation. All right. And if you have these initial conditions, 
these prescribed initial conditions, you have this sort of a solution. Right? This is what your solution looks like. Right? Um, I have to sort of look at this example again. Uh, I will verify this later on. Uh, but this sort of a system is non-uniformly asymptotically stable. Okay, it should be evident to you that uh, it is definitely converging because again, one plus t is going to go to infinity as t goes to infinity, and therefore all these terms are going to go to zero. So attractivity is definitely rather easy. Yeah, and it also has stability. We are not uh, really proving it here. Yeah, because it's not going to be very easy to prove in this particular case. Yeah, but you can sort of look at the face plane portraits, try to draw the face plane portraits. Yeah, and you will find that this is non uniformly asymptotically stable. So it is in fact stable, but not uniformly stable. Okay, so you don't have uniform asymptotic stability. All right, so this is another such special case. And this happens usually when there is a time dependence here, right? Then, then this sort of tends to happen okay when there is a time dependence in the right hand side you you sort of get uh, some kind of non-uniformity in your asymptotic stability properties all right this is pretty standard all right <clears throat> so, so what about the next system right this is the you know sort of a really favorite linear scalar system example very very simple right so this is sort of x in reals and x t0 is x0 okay so this is the sort of very very simple scalar linear system example and the solution of this is of course very well known to everybody yeah and it, it essentially looks like this right it is um, x0 e to the power minus kt minus t0 okay and we of course claim that this is exponentially stable right because if you simply look at uh, your, you know, what happens with your, uh, you know, you just look at your definition, right? What is the definition for exponential stability? In fact, let's look at global exponential stability, a linear system. So rather straightforward. Okay. So global exponential is requires the existence of just some constants a, b such that your solution satisfies this exponential decay for all t t0 greater than equal to 0 and for all initial conditions and, and so you can see that um, if i choose uh, you know choose a equal to 1 and b equal to k then satisfies global exponential stability condition Okay, satisfies the global exponential stability condition. Okay, and so this is, of course, you know, uh, globally exponentially stable. Okay, uh, so this is uh, in general true for you know linear time invariant systems. You have some really nice properties, of course. Um, the first anyway the first property for general linear systems is that asymptotic stability is equivalent to stability plus the state transition matrix so in case folks you you all of you have forgotten the notation so suppose i have a system of the form x dot is a t x okay with some initial condition so this is what is a linear system, right? It is time varying, but it is a linear system, right? Then in this case, the solutions are written as using a state transition matrix as uh, phi t comma t0 x0, where phi is of course the state called the state transition matrix so all of you are expected to have seen this if you're not please revise this terminology and notation for linear systems 
So all linear system solutions can be written in this form where this is a state transition matrix. Obviously, again, it should be evident to you that uh, phi t t0 belongs to n by n. So if where x belongs to Rn. Right, so this is an n by n matrix. Right? This is an n by n matrix map which maps initial conditions to the current value of the state. So as you plug in different t here, you get the state at that particular value of time. This, this is what is a how linear system solutions are written. And so this so for asymptotic stability, notice that we require stability and attractivity. Right, uh, and in this uh, in this case, attractivity is denoted by this, and stability is just written as stability here. But in fact, there is an equivalent characterization of this also, which is some written here, right? For linear system, stability is actually something like this. All right, so this is actually what it means. Uh, sorry, let's go here. So this is actually equivalent to having absolute value or norm of I will, phi t t zero less than k t zero and limit as t goes to infinity phi t t zero is zero so this is the stability part and this is the attractivity part okay this is the stability part and this is the attractivity part okay uh, so these are sort of equal there are simpler conditions if you may i mean if you want to call them simpler conditions right so uh, so this is actually lti in this case right so, so slightly simpler conditions for linear systems. Yeah. So stability is not just a generic um, epsilon delta sort of condition, but and neither is attractivity, but it is uh, sort of uh, codified in terms of the state transition matrix. So all these properties can be sort of codified in terms of the state transition matrix. Okay. So the other thing we say is for LTI systems, that is linear time invariant system. So what is a linear time invariant system? That is, uh, so LTI, I'm going to make this bigger again, so I can write. So LTI system is just x dot equals ax, and here we don't even care about writing an initial time. Well, fine, I will write it just for the sake of it. And in this case, the solutions x of t are written, can be written as x of a t minus t0 times x0, right? Where, of course, this is the exponential of a matrix. And this is the exponential of this matrix, right? I hope all of you know what is a matrix exponential. So in this case, if I get uniform asymptotic stability, Right. If I get uniform asymptotic stability, so of course I have two things. I have stability. Uh, so so I need a couple of properties. In this case, this will be uh, you know that UAS in this case is equivalent to uh, e to the because this is of course the state transition matrix. So this is equivalent to e to the power a t minus t0 less than some k t0 and also limit as t goes to infinity e to the power a t minus t0 again the norm is equal to 0 okay all right and if this this is uh, it's not difficult to show i mean this is not really linear systems intensive course as such, but it is not difficult to show that 
uh, and this you should something you should know also from your typical frequency domain knowledge that this can happen if and only if uh, the real parts of all eigenvalues of A are strictly negative. Right? And so, and so solutions, all solutions are exponential decay. Yeah? So this is all, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, uh, linear systems theory in this that, that comes in. Uh, if, if you are so in, interested, I can even tell you about it, right? So uh, any matrix A can be, of course, written in its uh, Jordan form. So real Jordan form, if you may. Um, P lambda, P inverse, where lambda is, of course, the um jordan jordan block called the jordan block yeah and so e to the power a t minus t zero can actually be written as p e to the power gamma t minus t zero p inverse okay and if real lambda is less than zero, right, this is equivalent to real lambda gamma less than zero because eigenvalues don't change under this sort of a similarity transformation. Again, something that you should know from linear systems theory, right? You have something like this. So all your solutions actually look like xt is p e gamma t minus t0 p inverse x0 All right so if you if you actually redenote your states as z equal to p inverse x then the solution is zt is exactly e to the power gamma t minus t0 z0 And for certain, I mean, just to keep the discussion simple, um, you know that for, we know that for certain cases, gamma is a diagonal matrix. It's just the eigenvalue matrix. I mean, just to think of it simply, if there are no complex eigenvalues, this is just the, just a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues, right? It's just a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues. For the exponential, uh, yes. so, diagonalizable cases what happens your z t looks like e to the power minus lambda 1 t minus t 0 e to the power minus lambda n t minus t 0 z 0 Okay, for the diagonalizable cases, you have something like this. Okay, and even for the non diagonalizable cases, only the real part matters, right? So, diagonalizable cases, of course, this is real, right? So, for the non diagonalizable, non -diagonalizable cases, also only the real part matters. Yeah, the complex part really just contributes to sinusoids and all, it doesn't change the magnitude of the solution. So, z is, of course, converging exponentially to zero, as you can see. Right? Because all of these lambdas are, uh, sorry, this is, actually, this is uh, actually positive. Uh, the way we have denoted it is, it is lambda 1, lambda n, 0 here and 0 here. So we know that all the lambda i's are negative, right, by our assumption. And all of these are negative, then of course, z is going to 0 exponentially so implies z goes to 0 exponentially right because you can look at the expression so implies of course that by this transformation that x is going to 0 exponentially because x is just z scaled by some constant matrix p okay? therefore we are done right this is 
we just show we started with uh, asymptotic stability and we took this sort of convergence property and from this convergence property i know that all the real parts of all eigenvalues have to be negative and then i can reduce a to its jordan block form yeah and which is and then we know that you know it's diagonalizable with this you know eigenvalues lambda of which the real parts are in even negative right so therefore z is going to zero and x is simply p times z therefore that is also going to zero exponentially because of this expression these are all exponential decays so uniform asymptotic stability for lti systems is actually just exponential stability lti systems cannot uh, do anything but exponential okay excellent excellent so so what we saw today there are a few more examples of uh, these notions of stability right um, and in the end we also uh, sort of try to understand uh, how these conditions simplify or, or become a little bit more specific for uh, linear systems and linear time invariant systems where solutions can be written uh, using the state transition matrix all right uh, so we will continue further on this discussion of stability uh, next time and we stop our discussion for today here thank you